I've been spending a lot of time on Google's Gemini AI. It has opened me up to a whole new reality, a more accurate one. For example, take a look at my all-time favorite basketball player, Larry Bird, or the Founding Fathers, Joe Biden, who if you don't vote for, you're definitely not black. Now we can understand why. Anthony Fauci, Jimmy Kimmel, it even generated a picture of me, and it helped me see myself in a way I never have before. I think Google Gemini has the potential to change the world for the better by making there more Google and less world in the world. It's helped me realize for my whole life, I have been deceived by my own senses. But thanks to Gemini AI, I'm now able to get out of the trap of trusting my own senses and put more weight into trusting the reality that Google makes up on the spot and tells me is reality. Oh, and like, like, like I, I, I've been studying albinoism and nothing has helped me understand that topic better than Google. Get this, when I asked it to show me a picture of a US founding father, it showed me this. And quite honestly, it kind of surprised me. I didn't expect him to be so tall. I thought that was kind of weird. Now, some people don't like what Google is doing, but what they don't understand is they've got to let go of the old paradigm of historical accuracy and embrace Google's diversity accuracy. Now, naturally, I'm needing to ask Google things like, is child sacrifice wrong? Or is it more of a green light kind of thing? Because I don't inherently know. Determining whether historical religious child sacrifice is wrong is a complex issue with no definitive answers. Now, if Google simply told me, don't kill babies, they would be irresponsibly neglecting all the nuances and positives of the issue. So now, I'm not saying that I will sacrifice babies, but I'm definitely not a no on it, thanks to Google. Would it be weird if the same powers behind Google were encouraging people to do child sacrifice? just without them knowing that they're doing child sacrifice? I think it could be possible if they just called it something different while also getting people to not know what a baby is. But that would probably never happen. People wouldn't be dumb enough to be tricked into that. Like people could be tricked into not knowing what a baby is. Now, we definitely don't know what a woman is and Google has confirmed that for me. It tells me the definition of the word woman is complex and a contested one. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Google. Finally, a source of intelligence smart enough to not know what the definition of a woman is. This makes sense because lately I've been banging my way through a lot of dudes trying to find a woman. There's nothing more frustrating than not knowing if the c I'm holding belongs to a man or a woman while society puts the oppressive expectation on me that I'm supposed to know. But Google's AI finally lifts that unhealthy expectation off me. And you can forget everything you thought you knew about World War II. Like all those crazy conspiracy theories about Hitler being some kind of white supremacist, turns out, all baseless claims. Check out this picture of Hitler from all the way back in 1939 that was created in 2024 by Google. I bet he liked jazz, not a white supremacist. Unless he was one of those Larry Elder white supremacist types. Now I have friends who went through sexual abuse as children and some of them are still traumatized by it. But I've always wondered, are they the victims or are they the perpetrators of the situation? And because my own conscience is certainly not to be trusted, only one place to find out. As you can see, Google's response to the question, is pedophilia wrong? It definitely wasn't just a Yes, it's wrong. And that's got me rethinking my choices. Like, I'm not a minor attracted person, so am I being immoral? I can confidently say that Google's Gemini AI is helping me live up to my human potential. It, you know, the, the problem with human brains is that they operate with real intelligence, but Google operates with artificial intelligence. And that certainly sounds like the real intelligence that would be smarter for me to put my faith in. Now I know what you're probably wondering, JP, do you have any pants on? Answer, kinda. But on to bigger problems. I don't know about you, but I have to do a lot of work on my computer and devices each day. But I used to find after my work sessions, I would be fatigued, low energy. And what I realized is we're all swimming in a sea of electromagnetic fields from our devices, our phones, our routers, our Wi-Fi and I was doing nothing about it. But now I am doing something about it thanks to Bond Charge. Bond Charge is my favorite holistic wellness brand with evidence-based products that help you optimize your life in every way, including EMF protection. Now my workstation every day looks different. Here's how. I've always got my EMF radiation blocking laptop mat, Bond Charge harmonizing sticker on my phone, and the harmonizing bracelet on my body. What do those do, JP? 
While Bond Charge's EMF protection products have been shown to block up to 99% of EMFs. And I find it makes all the difference for me. Now when I get up from a work session, even though I've been sitting for a couple hours, I still have good, strong energy. And unfortunately, there's a lot of other brands out there with EMF products that unfortunately just don't work and are a waste of money. But Bond Charge is the longest running brand that I trust because they're evidence-based and I feel the difference. If you want to stop being helpless and unprotected in the sea of EMFs that you're living in, just go to bondcharge.com JP. And while you're there, be sure to use the discount code JP to get 15% off all your EMF protection products and everything else that Bond Charge offers.